Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate this Sunday, the World Day of the Poor. Pope Francis reminds us today to remember those who are poor and those who are in need. May we learn from them and may we extend the hand of charity towards them. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for his pardon and mercy. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I, I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray.
Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Lo, the day is coming, blazing like an oven when all the proud and all evildoers will be stubble. And the day that is coming will set them on fire, leaving them neither root nor branch, says the Lord of hosts. But for you who fear my name, there will arise the Son of Justice with its healing rays. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. Let the sea and what fills it resound, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, the mountains shout with them for joy. Before the Lord, for He comes, for He comes to rule the earth. He will rule the world with justice and the peoples with equity. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know how one must imitate us, for we did not act in a disorderly way among you, nor, the, nor did we eat food received free from anyone. On the contrary, in toil and drudgery, night and day, we worked, so as not to burden any of you, not that we do not have the right. Rather, we wanted to present ourselves as a model for you, so that you might imitate us. In fact, when we were with you, we instructed you that if anyone was unwilling to work, neither should that one eat. We hear that some are conducting themselves among you in a disorderly way. 
by not keeping busy, but minding the business of others. Such people we instruct and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to work quietly and to eat their own food. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, all that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they ask him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you do not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, they will seize and persecute you they will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, this Sunday, we celebrate the World Day of the Poor as Pope Francis has established in 2016. This is a day when we remember those who are in need 
among us. And we also reflect on our own poverty and the poverty of Jesus through whom we have received the riches of the graces of God. Sa linggo pong ito ay inaalala natin ang mga dukha, ang mga mahihirap, ang mga nangangailangan sa ating pamayanan, sa ating lipunan. At inaanyayakan din tayo ng ating Santo Papa Francisco na pagnilayan din ang ating sariling kadukhaan. Matuto tayo kay Jesus na naging dukha kapiling natin. And uh, as we celebrate this uh, World Day of the Poor, I would like to begin my reflection this Sunday by quoting St. Francis of Assisi, a great teacher of poverty. St. Francis said, that when you leave this earth, you can take nothing from what you have received, but you can only take from what you have given. Sabi ni San Francisco, kapag natapos ang buhay natin sa daigdig na ito, ang madadala natin ay hindi ang mga naitago natin, kundi ang mga naibahagi natin. I think we can learn from St. Francis, the namesake of Pope Francis in this World Day of the Poor, that we are reminded that at the end of our lives, we will take not from what we have accumulated, but from what we have shared to others. This is also reflected in our first reading today from the book of the prophet Malachi. At the day of judgment, at the end of time, the prophet says, we will be identified not because of what we have accumulated, but we will be identified by what we have done. That is why in our first reading today, we hear of God in the day of judgment calling all the proud and the evildoers and also those who have feared His name and who have done good to others. Sa huling araw daw, sabi ng propeta sa unang pagbasa, ay huhusgahan tayo hindi sa dami ng kayamanan mo, kundi sa kung ano ang nagawa at naibahagi mo sa kapwa. At the end of time, in front of God, we are all poor. Nobody can say to God when you face Him in the day of judgment, Lord, here are my riches. We cannot say in front of God, I am rich. No, no one can tell that to God. In front of God, we are all poor. And what will be our riches when we face God? Not the things that we have gathered, but the things that we have given to others. That will be our treasure that we will present in front of God. That is why in our gospel reading today, Jesus 
warns us not to be deceived by people who come and who will warn us the end is near and we will be afraid and worried about the end. And what do we do when we are warned of the end? The tendency is we gather, we hoard, we accumulate. Jesus said, do not be deceived by that kind of idea that when the end is near, you need to keep everything to yourself. Jesus reminds us in the Gospel reading, instead, when the day ends, when the end of time comes, you will be asked by God to give testimony, to share to others, to give to others. Let us not be deceived by securing ourselves when the end of time comes. Jesus said, when you persevere in doing good to others, when you persevere in sharing to others, only at that time can you really secure your lives. Tayo pa naman mga kapatid, kapag dumarating ang katapusan, ang tendency natin ay magtago, maghoard para sa sarili natin, para sigurado na tayong secured tayo sa huli. Magbibigay ko ako ng isang halimbawa. Siguro meron na sa inyo rito nakakain sa mga eat all you can or buffet. Ako yan, no? paboritong paborito natin yan. Kapag sinabi na sa inyo, magsasara na ako ng ganitong oras, in 10 minutes, magsasara na ako. So last call na po ng mga gusto ninyong pagkain, anong sinasabi agad natin? Oh, dali, kuha na kayo. No? Kunin nyo na lahat ng gusto ninyong kainin bago pa matapos ang oras. The tendency is to gather all the food that you want because it is already ending. The time is ending. We need to secure all the food that we want. O anong katapusan? Di nyo naman nauubos yun. No? Kakakuha natin ng pagkain, hindi nyo naman nauubos. That is the deception of the end of time. When you are told that your time is ending, you want to secure everything for yourselves. But you will not really need all of those. Kukuha ka ng tatlong plato ng hipon, ng sugpo. Tingnan ko na lang kung hindi tumaas ang presyon mo pagkatapos niyan. Kuha ng kuha kapag end of time. That is the deception warned for us by Jesus. Baka natatawa lang ko tayo ngayon sa example na yon. Pero nangyari yan. Do you remember during the lockdowns? nagkakaubusan ng vitamin C. Sa ibang bansa, nagkakaubusan ng toilet paper. Nagkakaubusan ng pagkain. Nagkakaubusan ng gamot. In face of the prospect of the end of times, people hoarded during the lockdowns of this pandemic, how many people still have now in your stock rooms toilet papers? How many of you still have in your stock rooms bottles of vitamin C? Sige, ubusin nyo yan hanggang masira ang mga kidney ninyo sa vitamin C. How many of us have stocked a lot of food 
that expired in your stock rooms. That is the deception of the end of times. We hoard, we gather, we need to secure ourselves, and we have forgotten the poor. Fortunately, here in our country, one woman stood up and said, I will not hoard during this lockdown. Instead, I will share. Do you remember her? Miss Anna Patricia Nun. She started the community pantries. Tumindig siya at sinabi niyang, hindi ako maghohoard kapag lockdown. Bagkos ang gagawin ko, yung sobra ko ay ibabahagi ko, lalo na para sa mga nangangailangan. And we were all inspired. And many of us opened our eyes and saw that at the end of our time, in the prospect of death, in the face of sickness and death, what we need is not hoarding, but sharing. Siguro po marami sa inyo dito ang nagbahagi sa mga community pantries, even in our parishes. Jesus is calling us that. That at the end of times, in the prospect of the end of our lives, we will take nothing from what we have hoarded and received, but we will take in heaven what we have shared with others. And so, let us remember the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians in our second reading today. St. Paul reminds the Christians in Thessalonica, they are reminded of the end of days, the coming of the Lord, when the world will end. And St. Paul admonishes them, there are people among you that when they heard that the day, the, the time will come when the world will end, some of you are not already doing anything. They are just staying at home, securing themselves. And they have stopped doing good works to others. St. Paul admonishes them, we do not stop working. We do not stop doing good to others. Because when the Lord comes and the day of judgment comes, Jesus will ask us, not what you have hoarded for yourselves, but what you have shared with others. Mga minamahal na kapatid, sa araw po na ito, sa linggong ito, ipinagdiriwang natin ang araw ng mga dukha. Pinapaalala sa atin, Sa harap ng Diyos, tayong lahat ay dukha. At sa katapusan ng buhay natin sa mundong ito, pagharap natin muli sa lumikha sa atin, wala tayong ibang dala na ating naitago. Ang dala natin ay kung ano ang naibahagi natin, lalo na sa mga dukha. Let us remember the words of St. Francis today. When you leave this earth, you can take nothing from what you have received and kept. You can only take from what you have given. Amen. Please stand. 
Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Time and human history are moving to God's final day. As our prayers go out in charity for others, so we seek His merciful judgment. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Pope and bishops will continue to proclaim the one Redeemer in the face of contradiction and opposition. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the suffering caused by war and terrorism may be ended by courageous and just people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the unemployed may find gainful employment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in a world of turmoil, we may witness to the good news that Christ is coming again. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, the Son of Righteousness, will shine with healing rays on those who have died. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Father of all times and seasons, your Son has revealed to us the final struggle between good and evil. May these prayers give us courage and help us to persevere in goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through His Paschal Mystery, He accomplished the marvelous deed by which He has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out 
for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, Forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of Him may bring us growth in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Muli po ay nagpapasalamat po kami sa inyong lahat, sa inyong pagdalaw po dito sa Manila Cathedral at sa inyo pong pakikiisa sa amin sa pagdiriwang ng banal na misa. Lalo na po yung mga linggo-linggo ay nandito at nakakasama namin. Salamat din po sa mga nakiisa sa atin sa online broadcast ng misang ito, sa ating mga social media pages at sa ilan pang mga pages na kumukuha po ng ating mga pagdiriwang ng banal na misa. Maraming salamat po sa inyong patuloy na tulong at pagsuporta sa Manila Cathedral. Muli po ngayong araw ay nandito ang ilan sa mga miyembro ng St. Vincent de Paul Parish na humihingi po sa atin ng tulong sa kanilang pagpatuloy na pagpapaayos ng kanilang simbahan na ay maibahagi po natin ang ating tulong lalo na po sa kanilang komunidad na nangangailangan po nito. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. May He let His face shine upon you and show you His mercy now and forever. Amen. May He turn His countenance towards you and give you His peace now and forever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen.